Guess your figure's about six days, hard driving. Where are you going with that wood? Well, Granny wants it on the truck. Put it down. With all the wood we got back at the cabin, we sure ain't gonna haul none from Beverly Hills. Oh, she says it's for on the way. On the way? <laughs> Granny, what in the world do you do? I'm making sure we don't freeze to death. Get warm here. Won't be when we get to the mountains. <laughs> you figure to keep that thing burning for us. six days? And six nights. Don't forget, it's December every other place but here. Can't blame California. The weather's as mixed up as the people. <laughs> I'll be glad when I get back where there's some snow and ice. I can't wait to see Ma and Jeff Green. Yeah, it'll be my fine Christmas present for your Ma and your sister, uh, dropping in on them like this. Now, tell me again. Exactly what did Marie say? Zipper said the climates were loading their truck and appeared to be moving out. Why? What could have happened? Who offended them? Whoever it was, I'll have them driven out of Beverly Hills. Chief, <laughs> Chief, don't get so upset. I know a man with $25 million in your bag is Is that why you think I'm upset? Because Jed Trafford has $25 million in my bag? Isn't it? Of course not. The thing that upsets me is the fact he might take it out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whatever happened to the key to that door, but I reckon with our stuff out of there, ain't nothing left anybody want to take, except the old pictures. Oh, Miss Hathaway says a couple of them pictures is Rembrandt. All right, after Christmas, we'll see he gets them back. <laughs> John! John! Where, where, where are you going? We're going home. What? Oh, please, you can't go away and leave me like this. All right, climb on. I reckon we got room for you. Oh, my heavens, we caught you before you left. Granny, is there room for two back there? Yeah, if you want to squat next to the stove. <laughs> no, we don't want to go with you. We want you to stay here. We'll be back after Christmas. Well, Mr. Clampett, if, if you want to go home for Christmas, let me make the arrangement. I'll have you there tonight. Tonight? Clean back home? Yes, and you'll arrive in style, too. Well, Miss Hathaway, I think Granny and Ellie May should have mink coats for the trip, don't you? Oh, of course. Well, let's go take care of it, and the reservations, too. Mr. Clampett, you start unloading the truck and leave everything to us. You'll be home in five or six hours on the jet. What's a jet, Paul? I don't know. A bus or jitney, I reckon. Get us there tonight? You heard what he said. Well, that will be a surprise, Pearl. Uncle Jed? It took us six days to get out of here. How are we going to get back home in five or six hours? That bus driver must know a doozy of a shortcut. <laughs> champagne and caviar? I guess so. Why? The entire first class section has been reserved for a family of VIPs. The Clampett. Wow. <laughs> Young ladies, I presume you've been advised of a special arrangement for the Clampett family? Oh, yes, yes indeed. indeed. Certainly have. Here they come now. Oh, get a load of those minks. Granny, Ellie Mae, right this way. I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable in the lounge. But... How did they get past the gate? Let's get them out of here before the clamp would see them. Uh, I'm afraid you're in the wrong section. May I see your tickets, please? Well, I don't think we got any. See, this bus sure is fancy. Bus? You've come to the wrong place. You want the bus station. Now, just go back the way you came and ask for the traveler's aid. Now, they'll help you. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you, ma'am. Uh, Granny, Ellie Mae, come on. We're on the wrong bus. Mr. Clampett, what's the trouble? This is Mr. Clampett? Of course. Right this way. Is your problem? Here, Jethro, keep the tickets. Now, Mr. Clampett, you have the money Mr. Drysdale gave you? Yes, ma'am, right here. A limousine will meet you and take you to Pearl's house. And Mr. Drysdale is phoning ahead to Mr. Brewster to be sure your cabin is in order. Well, don't let him give away a surprise to Pearl. Oh, he won't. Well, happy landing, Merry Christmas, and au revoir. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you, too. And Jethro? Here's something for you if you promise to bring it back to me. <laughs> Take a pair of them and remember the tall, young, good looking one is mine. <laughs>
brand spanking new. Oh, I'll take good care of it. Well, it's Christmas. I got my rheumatism medicine to keep me warm. You can have it. <laughs> Should I, Paul? Well, I reckon not. We don't mind sharing with folks, but when they get grabby and wanting everything, well, we just got to mule up and uh, say no. <laughs> if you can't afford to buy a coat of your own, here, you just peel off whatever you need. No, no, Mr. Clare, but you misunderstood. We just want to hang the coats up. We don't want you to give them to us. Oh, well, that's very neighborly of you. Thank you very much. Sure. <laughs> now, if you'll all be seated over here until we get underway. Come on, go. Now, fasten your belt. Well, I ain't wearing one, ma'am. Just McGillis's. I meant your seatbelt. Mm, doggy, this is a fancy bus. <laughs> Looks like a bus is commencing to pull out. Now we'll see if this bus driver knows an all-fire fancy shortcut. <laughs> That's you and me watch the road so we can remember it. Okay, Jeff, <laughs> This bus driver of ours is lost. He just keeps us circling and a turning. <laughs> I noticed no shortcut yet. Ding, ding. Listen to him a racing that engine. Yeah, but the wheels must be spinning in the mud. We ain't moving. <laughs> Got her out of the mud. Yeah, we're moving now. Look at this split, too. My dog is if he gets to going much faster, this thing is going to leave the ground. <laughs> bus driver to slow down. We ain't got time for that. Let's get off of this thing before it gets any higher. <laughs> now, wasn't that a smooth takeoff? You may unfasten your seatbelts anytime you like. Would you folks like some champagne caviar? Or would you prefer a nice hot meal? We have steak, chicken, fish, anything you like. Oh, no thanks. We had a mess of grits and jowls before we left home. <laughs> Perhaps you'd like to relax then. Take a little nap. Doggy, Granny, ain't that something? It's good for the rheumatism. <laughs> now, if there's anything else that we can do to make your trip more comfortable, just press the little button. And we'll be right here. Them girls ain't a bit scared. Sure is friendly, too. Often to share their food with. <laughs> Makes me feel ashamed we didn't let them keep our coat. <laughs> you don't want me to go up and talk to the bus driver, Uncle Jed? No, I reckon not, Jethro. Don't nobody else seem skittish, and we don't want folks to think this is our first bus ride. Jim. Yeah, Granny? It sure will be nice to see snow again, won't it? That's the truth. Christmas just don't seem like Christmas without it. And Pearl's house is all a special pretty in the snow. She sure is going to be surprised when we all come tromping in there tonight. Howdy, Pearl. How am I, Winch? When are you going to learn not to walk into a body's house without a body inviting you? Well, I rang and you didn't come. You, you didn't give me time, you old coot. Now, don't you never do that again. Get out of my parlor. I like you when you're mad, Pearl. <laughs> You're an exciting woman. <laughs> Homer, you get out of here. I don't have time for your foolishness. Jeffreen and me is going to California to spend Christmas with Cousin Jake. 
and I reckon you don't care to hear what I got to say. Right. About Mr. Brewster. Mr. Brewster? Yeah, that tall, good-looking city fellow who works for the oil company, drives that big car. But what about him, Mr. Hinko? I've been ordered from your parlor, Pearl. I think I'd best be but going. Hold on, hold on. I, I didn't mean it. Please, Homer, you tell me about Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you a sweet potato pie. Well. And for dessert, red horse swimming in elderberry wine. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> Well, you see, he stopped over at the Emporium to get some cheese and crackers. Said he was going to be over at Jed's cabin alone all day, and he didn't have no food. Thank you, Homer. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Now, wait, wait, wait a minute, Pearl. You ain't going to do me out of my tater pie, are you? Well, of course not. You get it. Well, when, when? Well, I'll let you know. I'm busy right now. Bye, now, Homer. <laughs> Ding, dang, darn it, I done it again. Let some pretty woman twist me around her finger. <laughs> I hate to go home. Mama's gonna give me the ticket. <laughs> I'll chase that Brewster fella, that's where. Ah, she ain't likely to catch him in her horse and buggy. <laughs> Whoa, Betsy. Now, Betsy, I play my cards, right? You get to keep that bear blanket permanent. Because I'm going to have something else to keep me warm. A husband. <laughs> Ain't that a beautiful word, husband? Husband. And what's more, I'll be riding in that big, fancy automobile. So you can retire to pasture with that good-looking racehorse from Hot Springs. <laughs> I thought I heard a horse. Mrs. Bodine. Well, won't you come in? Well, thank you. It's a mighty cold today, isn't it? Well, it's nice to see you again. I, uh, I'm sorry it's so cold in here. Didn't bother to build a fire in the fireplace, and I'm afraid that kerosene stove doesn't put out much heat. Well, I can't stay but a minute. I just came by to give you this and say Merry Christmas. Thank you. Oh, you shouldn't have. Oh, wait. Just something that I made myself. <laughs> oh, nice. Land to mercy. Look at this place. Why, you men just can't manage alone, can you? It takes a woman. <laughs> oh, please don't bother. I, I won't be here. See, I'm going home to Tulsa for the holidays. I won't go no trouble. I'll just throw together a little snack, and while you're eating, I'll tidy up a bit. <laughs> the most fantastic miracle I've ever seen. The way you produced this banquet right out of thin air. Ham, fried chicken, roast pork, and this delicious sweet potato pie. That's my own special recipe. Oh. Here, I wash it down with some red horse and elderberry juice. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that is sensational juice. But, Mrs. Bodine, I, I just can't eat another bite, I think. Why, Mrs. Bodine, what have you done to this cabin? Oh, do you see a difference? And where did you get those curtains? Well, I just run them up while you was eating. Really, you are a remarkable woman. You, you cook, you sew, you're a wonderful housekeeper. And, and I love it. It ain't work to me at all. It's pure enjoyment. Mrs. Bodine, I know that this must seem awfully sudden to you, and I, I know you have lots of ties and lots of activities here in the hills, but I was wondering, do you think you could possibly be happy living in a city like Tulsa? 
Matrosa. That's where you live, ain't it? Yes, I have a very nice home there, but frankly, it needs you. And I think Mother will agree. You want me to meet your mom, Mother? Well, actually, it isn't necessary, and I know Mother will approve my choice. You don't have to give me your answer immediately. You just think it over. Y and we... Yes, that, that's my answer. Yes. <laughs> but we haven't even discussed money. I'll give you every cent I might. <laughs> so, Dean, as my housekeeper, I will be paying you. Housekeeper. <laughs> that's the carry for Mother. Oh, incidentally, Mother's just going to love this elderberry juice. <laughs> What's the matter? <laughs> you sure did. You let me cook for you. You let me sew for you. And the ham. <laughs> me house clean for you. Now then, I don't know what it takes to get engaged in Tulsa, but in these here hills, you've done enough to get yourself promised, hitched, and honeymoon. <laughs> really, uh, uh, Mrs. Bodine, I, I didn't mean to. I'm going to Beverly Hills to spend Christmas with my cousin Jeff. And when I tell him what you done, he ain't gonna take kindly to it. But, Mrs. Baldine, I give you my word that you I... You give me my hand, it sucks. <laughs> Your feet can't get no colder than they are right now. Like babies. You think we should wake him for the movie? I don't know. It's a lady super western, just the kind of thing that they'd enjoy. Well, why don't we start it and if they wake up, fine. Good idea. misconstrue. You see, uh, I have a very delicate situation here. Yes, you certainly have. And if you spoil Jed Clampett's Christmas surprise, he'll cut off your oil. <laughs> but, but Pearl might think I want to marry. Merry Christmas to you, too. Uh, hello? Hello? Oh, boy. Here's the sweet potato pie and red horse, I promise. Hey, there's a piece of this pie missing. Go for two of these red hogs. Who got it, Pearl? None of your business. Now get along. Jethreen and me is leaving for California. Yeah, I want a whole pie just like I was promised. Now you get out of here before I throw you out of here. Men is all alike. Gimme, gimme, gimme. You're an exciting woman, Pearl. <laughs> oh, don't even speak to me. 
brain a man alive worth the powder it'd take to blow him to you know where. <laughs> man is just a bunch of low down, no good Mr. Brewster. Bodine, I, I hope you're not angry at me any longer. Angry at you? Why, don't be ridiculous. Oh, here, have, have, a, have some more sweet tea to pie and some red hot. <laughs> oh, this is a rascal been trying to steal my woman and my pie. I'm going to give you such a show. <laughs> oh, I think I throwed my dang knee out. And I'm going to throw out the rest of you. <laughs> business I uh, what I mean to say is that I I'm away from home a lot and uh, uh, well I, I think that a husband should uh, that is uh, what I what I mean to say is that in my opinion I could I have another slug of that elderberry juice no you cannot now then I've been sitting here for three solid hours listening to you and you have yet to say one word that a widow woman could get her teeth into. <laughs> Just bring, bring the suitcase, oh, oh, please don't, don't. I ain't listening to one more word you got to say lest you say it on your knees. Don't come in yet, Jeff Green. <laughs> say it. Please don't go. You are the slipperiest man that ever lived. Come on, Jeff Green. <laughs> Get out of my parlor and you stay out. You want me to throw him out, Mom? He can walk. Homer Winch, is that you again? Oh, Pearl, it's us. Merry Christmas, Jeffrey. Uncle Dad. Why, you have grown. <laughs> Mr. Brewster. What are you doing? Mr. Clafford, if you'd been just one second later, I'd have been engaged to your cousin Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Go back out there, Go back out there. Please, Mr. Clafford. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hardy to say hi to you. 
Yes, sir. They just don't make houses like this no more. <laughs> sure don't make them in Beverly Hills. I'll go get the bags, Uncle Jeff. Reckon they just can't get wood like this. My grandpa chopped down the trees and built this all by hand. You say your grandfather built this cabin? He sure did. Oh, he must have been a remarkable man. He sure was. He finished the cabin in the morning, went to town, found a girl, courted her, married her, and carried her across that doorstep all before sundown. <laughs> Tell me, Granny, was that 18 and 97 or 18 and 98? 18 and 98. Yeah, that's right. She was 18 and Grandpa was 98. <laughs> you say he was 98 and his bride was 18? That's right. Marriage didn't work out too good. So I don't doubt it. Yeah, Grandpa made the mistake of having his ma come live with him. <laughs> Awful bossy old woman. Wouldn't let that little bride do nothing. Did everything herself. <laughs> Your uh, family has remarkable longevity. No. Yeah, they, they, they stretch the truth a little, too. Oh? Grandpa was the day over 90 when he married that girl. And his ma didn't bust up the marriage. That poor little bride just wore out, having so many young'uns to take care of. Oh, uh, what, uh, what happened to Ellie Mae? Well, she just went to say howdy to some of her friends. Doggone wise, where is she? Ooh. Well, David Crockett. Say, so you're looking bushy as ever. What's the matter? What you scared of? Don't you remember me? Please, David, don't run away. Oh, hi, Mr. Beaver. Me, Ellie. What you kicking snow at me for? Oh, please, Mr. Beaver. Come back. Hi, Mr. Foxy. Me, Ellie. Come back. Papa, I certainly appreciate your letting me use your cabin as a field headquarters. I've got a few things in the bedroom. I'll, I'll get them out. It'd be for you to do that, Mr. Brewster. We're just going to be here a couple of days. Granny and Ellie can you know, use the bedroom, and you and me can kind of curl up here in front of the fire. Well, that's my kind of you, Mr. Clampett. But I'll find a place to stay in town. Well, no need for you to drive all that way through the snow. Uh, you're here, you're by the oil field, and uh, Granny cooks up a big meal that really sick to your ribs. What you cooking in the bar, Granny? My special Christmas holiday vittle. We'll start with red cabbage and green turnip tops, swimming with sarga. <laughs> then what I call my heavenly hash. That's grits and chitlins, possum belly, hog jowl, and cabbage. All minced together and simmered in gopher gravy. <laughs> Post talking. Mm. Now there's vittles you won't forget in a hurry. I'll try. <laughs> what do you too hard, we'll get some uh, pine boughs and ashes for you to sleep on. Well, I, uh, I think I'll go into town. Thank you very much. Excuse me. What's the matter with you two asking him to stay here? You want me to be a widow all my life? I was going to offer him my spare room. You ain't got no spare room, Pearl. I have if Jethro stays here. <laughs> if Mr. Brewster stays with you and Jeth Reen, won't, won't people talk? I hope so. <laughs> Jed can insist on him marrying me. But I'm going to get him. Now's my chance. I can't hold with making a man get married unless he wants to. He wants to? Why, that man's so in love with me, he can't eat. Yeah, but are you in love with him, Pearl? Oh, Jed, when I'm near him, I feel like my feet is dangling in a creek and the minnows is biting at my toes. <laughs> That's what you call really being in love. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, if you'd like a ride into town, I can drop you off on my way to the hotel. Hotel? Why, you, you can't stay there. Oh, no, sir. You sure can't. Why not? Why not, Jed? Uh, why not, Pearl? Why not? There's a convention there. Yeah. Every room in that hotel is full up. 
They're packed in there like crouch in a jar. What kind of convention? Uh, elf convention. <laughs> that that hotel is bulging with elves. Oh, well, perhaps I can find a room in a boarding house. Huh. You know anybody got a spare room, Granny? No, I don't. Do you, Jed? Well, I see now. The uh, only spare room I know of around here is over to your house, Pearl. Why, land to mercy, I plump for God, yeah. <laughs> My spare room. <laughs> what spare room, Ma? We ain't got it. Ow! <laughs> room, why don't you run out and fetch some wood? I just brought some wood in. What spare room, Ma? We ain't got no spare room. Ow! <laughs> Just run along outside and get the kinks out of that leg. I ain't got no kinks in my leg. It's just that Ma just keeps out. Son, if you're gonna play hopscotch, you go outside. How sign for playing games? But I ain't playing games. And don't chop me some wood. I just chopped some wood. I got for some green wood. You want to smoke a possum? Now? I just chopped some wood and I put it right there. I just put it right around the corner. Now you come to my house, Mr. Brewster. The spare room is yours. Well, all right. If it's not, why should I sleep here on the floor? I got a room. Ow! <laughs> he, he's given to stitches in the leg, ain't he, Granny? <laughs> I'll have him rub it with some hot possum grease tonight. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get going. Uh, Aunt Pearl, would you do me a big favor? Well, of course, Daddy May. What is it? Would you take this here fur coat? Your mink? For, for keeps? I sure would appreciate it. It makes my friends in the woods kind of skittish. They must reckon I'll be wearing them next. <laughs> well, I don't rightly know if hey, I Go should... ahead and take it, Pearl. That is, if you don't mind, it's been the war once or twice before. <laughs> oh, not at all. I tell you what. I'll put it in one of my hope chests, and I'll uh, wear it on my honeymoon. <laughs> Say, Mr. Clampett, isn't that an awful big tree that, that Jethro's chopping down? Hey, you're notching it on the wrong side, too. Hey, Jethro, quit notching that tree on this side. It's liable to fall right down on the kill. Oh, 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 oh. It missed us. Please, and look. Well, the tree missed. We can get up now. Well, he, he might be chopping another one. Let's wait and see. <laughs> actors there is, Francis X. Bushman and Raymond Navarro. <laughs> now, we's all supposed to kind of surround Mr. Brewster and brag on Pearl's piano playing during the picture. Well, Jethro can brag extra for me. <laughs> Jethro ain't gonna be there. He just sat there all night and complained about Mr. Brewster having his room. Oh, come on, Ellie. Don't you want to help Pearl get a husband? Okay, Paul. Well, Paul, ain't you gonna kiss Maggie goodbye? I don't reckon so. Uh, her husband might not like it. <laughs> Come on, Eddie. Yeah, three. It's a picture of your mom. Yeah, it says in her. 
person, Pearl Bodine, wizard of the keyboard. Oh, that means Piani. Hey, your name is as big as Ben Hur's. <laughs> I beg the manager not to put that up, but he says it's a drawing card. My playing during the picture. During the picture? But don't you have sound? Loads of it. Between the people crunching popcorn and frying and reading the titles out loud, you got plenty of sound. Everybody go on in and sit down, you're all on complimentary passes. <laughs> now, I gotta pop some corn and sell tickets before I come in and play the overture. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, did you ever in all your born days see the woman who could do more things than my cousin Pearl? She can cook, sew, keep house, play piano, and no wonder the men around here are just beating her door down to propose. But Pearl's choicey. She's waiting for the right man. Here comes Aunt Pearl. Ladies and gentlemen, before our big premiere gets underway, I know you'll want to meet the celebrities in our audience tonight. Now, a setting right here in the front row from Tulsa, Oklahoma, is the field manager of the OK Oil Company, but because of Ted Twomp, Mr. John Brewster. <laughs> Homer Winch, get up there and you clean off that screen right now. Ain't you ashamed? Yeah, Pearl, but I couldn't help myself. I'm just eat up with jealousy. I see red. Well, I see it too, so clean off the movie screen. Ben Hur will look like he's bleeding before the chariot race ever starts. <laughs> when you're mad, Pearl. Get up there, you coot. <laughs> And, and now, folks, you're going to meet a real live millionaire and his family all the way from Beverly Hills, California. Your friends and my kinfolk, the Clampets. <laughs> Jed, Granny, Ellie Mae. <laughs> Mighty nice to be back here with you again, and uh, you all invited to come visit us in Beverly Hills. Got plenty of room, and uh, Granny will wamp up a mess of heavenly hash for you. Jim, can I show him my meat coat? Sure, Granny. This here is a genuine meat coat. <laughs> Give to me by the banker. Nobody gets the wrong idea. There ain't no strings attached. I'm still the same sweet girl I was when I left here. <laughs> and now, folks, I got a real big surprise for you. As you know, those that can read, the picture for tonight is Ben Hur, and I have wrote and composed a special song in honor of the chariot race, which is the most exciting part of the picture. And this here special song is going to be sung by my daughter, Jess Reed. Think about Jess Reed. <laughs> the song will be sung in its entirety during the chariot race, and you can all join in the chorus. Uh, but seeing that Homer Winch ain't got the tomato off the screen yet, <laughs> Jeff Green will give you a little sample right now. <laughs> Try. <laughs> 
can join in the chorus. And now, during the playing of the overture, we invite your kind attention to the advertisements which will appear on the screen. I think. All right, Charlie! <laughs> But a city dude. Hush up. When them fellas ain't nothing but a bunch of playboys. Just like bees flitting from flower to flower, grabbing up the honey. And then when your petals is drooping, they fly away. Everybody can hear you. I ain't ashamed of what I got to say. I love Pearl Bodine. Stop, Homer. Now quiet down, Homer. You're making Pearl blush. Be my blushing bride, Pearl. Right here before your kinfolk, your neighbors, and Ben Hur. I'm asking you to marry me. Up off your knees, you're making a spectacle of yourself. I, I, I caught him, Ma. <laughs> I was sneaking out the door, and I caught him. I was not sneaking. I, I simply went outside for a breath of fresh air. Put him down. You uh, wasn't running away, was you, Mr. Brewster? No, of course not. <laughs> Everybody's invited over to my house for apple cider. <laughs> you want that makes you fat is what you get. sharing a bed with Ellie Mae. I still don't mind sharing a bed with Ellie Mae, but I draw the line when it comes to sharing with them others. What others? Well, there was an owl and a squirrel, a crow and a fox, a possum and a skunk and a porcupine. <laughs> well, I'll go in and speak to Ellie Mae. I wouldn't go in there if I were you unless you want them flannels took right off you. What are you talking about? You know where my mink coat is right now? Where? In the top of a tree, full of baby eagles. <laughs> Their mama and me fought for nigh on to ten minutes for that coat. But with them claws on her, she could get a better purchase on it. She took it right out the window. You've been at your rheumatiz medicine. I ain't about to swallow no story about a eagle. Sam Granny, a great big old eagle just snatched the hat right off my head. See what I told you? When a mama eagle wants to keep her babies warm, she'll grab anything. Somebody better help Ellie Mae hang on to her blankets, because that rascal just flew in her window. <laughs> Frida, you hadn't ought to took Jethro's hat. <laughs> Never mind about Jethro's hat. Ask her to bring back Granny's mink coat. <laughs> Only if she wants to. Frida, you bring back Granny's mink coat. 
And if she's took any suitcases, see if you can get them back, too. He's packing up. Sit down. Oh, excuse me. Good morning, Pearl. Homer Winch, I told you and I told you, don't come into my house without I invite you. I happen to be here in my official capacity as a jitney driver. Not no jitney. Well, Mr. Brewster does. <laughs> don't say nothing to Mr. Brewster, and I'll bake you two pies. Pearl, there's only one way you can seal my lips and stop my jitney, and that's with a smack. <laughs> All right. No, no, I said that can. I mean, with a kiss. A kiss? That's my price. Take it or leave it. Oh, why, that's the most shocking, disgusting, insulting, disgrace. Oh, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> Bert, where'd you go, Pearl? She must have heard we was leaving. Without getting her married to Mr. Brewster. Bergen, we's in for considerable balling. Ain't nobody can outcry Ma when she commences to gush. <laughs> Pearl? I reckon you's heard. We's going back to Beverly Hills. <laughs> oh, now, Pearl, you's balling already. Uh, don't worry, Pearl. You'll get a fella. <laughs> yeah, come on back to Beverly Hills with us. I can't. All right, Pearl, all right. I can't fight a woman's tears. We'll stay here until you marry Mr. Brewster. Yeah, Ma, and, and I'll be your best man. <laughs> and you can wear that beautiful mink coat on your honeymoon. <laughs> Pearl, what are you crying about now? <laughs> the mink coat. <laughs> what about it? I was driving down the road, and a great big eagle took it right out of my lap. <laughs> Don't you worry. Ellie Mae! Yeah, Pa? You shinny up that tree and tell that grabby eagle to give you back that mink coat for Pearl's honeymoon or she ain't no friend of yours. <laughs> <laughs> Only if she wants to, of course. <laughs> sleeping on this cold, hard floor. Mm, that's a fact. You think that's bad? You ought to try sharing a room with that wild daughter of yours. Well, these ways you got a bed. That ain't a bed. That's a nest, a roost, and a den and a hutch all in one. Is them animal friends of Ellie's still coming in at night, Granny? Everything that can get through the window. Why don't you shut the window? Because I can't sleep without fresh air, especially with that third party in bed with us. What third party? Ellie! Can you come out here and bring your friend with you? Yeah, Granny. Uh, don't you worry about it, Granny. I'll chuck it out. Whatever it is, you got to get your sleep. It's a little hot, Granny. Your pa wants that pole cat. Give it to him. Now, wait a minute. Don't point that thing at me. You don't want to get drove outdoors on a night like this. Well, don't you want him, Pa? I just want to say that Granny'd appreciate it if you'd have this little fella sleep with his own family. All right, I'll go get the other thing. Oh, no, 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 outdoors with his family. Otherwise, when we go to California, they might not take him back in. And if a skunk ain't welcome with his own family, he just about ain't got nobody to turn to. All right, I'll put him out the window. Uncle Jed, 
Why can't we go back to Beverly Hills right away? Reckon we can tell him the truth, Granny? I reckon he's big enough. Well, you see, we promised your ma we'd stay here and help her till she gets herself married to Mr. Brewster. Well, how long will that take? Well, it ain't to take long. She's got him boarding in your room now where she can get at him. Pearl told me tonight, tonight. She's gonna feed him into a stupor, then set him in the parlor and sing to him until he proposes. That's a powerful combination. Pearl's cooking and singing. Yeah. <laughs> if he can get God, Pearl will get him. <laughs> <laughs> That a precious picture? <laughs> Niagara Falls. Where the honeymooners go. <laughs> I understand they're having special winter rates there now. I think I'd better turn in. I've got to get up awfully early. No, 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 morning. no. You sit down and relax. Jeff Green and me's got a special surprise for you. It isn't food, is it? Food for the soul and the spirit. Music. What would you like to hear? Oh, anything you'd like to sing. Well, I'll just pick out something at random. <laughs> Let's try this, Jeffrey. Was you on the stage, Mr. Brewster? Oh, yes, yes. After college, I did quite a bit of little theater work, summer stock. As a matter of fact, there was a time when I seriously considered the stage as my career. Mo, Mr. Brewster's an actor. Well, not any longer. My father had other ideas. He insisted I get into the oil business. Uh, Mr. Brewster, did you ever do anything from the Bard of Avon? That Shakespeare. Oh, I just love him. Well, as a matter of fact, I once played the lead in Romeo and Juliet. Which one was you? I was Romeo. 
Uh, in my youth, I was considered quite a quite a leading man type. And there were those who thought I had rather a handsome profile. Well, you still got it. And I'll bet you can act to beat the band. Oh, come on. Take off a part for something from Shakespeare. See now, Jeffrey. Well, I doubt if I can remember anything. Oh, please, Mr. Brewster. Well, uh, perhaps I can recall something from the balcony scene. Let's see now. Uh, how does it go? Uh, but soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, are far more fair than she. Go to bed, Catherine. Uh, well, I think I'll turn in. Oh, well, uh, please, do some more of them love speeches from Shakespeare. Well, my throat is a little sore. I think I'd better gargle a little warm salt water and go to bed. Well, I can take care of you. That's another one of my specialties. Nursing the sick. Well, it might be the flu bug, and you wouldn't want to catch it. Uh, good night. If his flu bug is as hard to catch as he is, I got nothing to worry about. <laughs> You ever know it to be so cold? Here I am, Jethro. Ah, this ain't cold. Your blood is thinned out from living in California. You say this ain't cold, Granny? Look who else is huddled up to the fire. Billy and her wolves. <laughs> Size him up for breakfast. <laughs> well, in all sincerity, Mr. Crampett, your your cousin Pearl is a very remarkable woman. It's just that, well, I, I don't want to get married. Well, I understand that, Mr. Brewster, and I thank you for speaking the truth like a man. But my cousin Pearl has got herself a problem. Oh, what's that? Well, uh, ain't no secrets in the hills. Everybody a dog knows that you've been boarding with her over at her place, and they all know she's had her cap set for you. Oh, I ain't blaming you, Mr. Brewster. Jed? Did he say yes? Can we come out now? Well, not yet a while, Granny. 
And if you're too chicken to shoot him, Ellie's got her wool standing by. <laughs> Mr. Brewster, in order to save my cousin Pearl from shame, I'm going to ask you to do me a big favor. Anything I can do. I want you to propose to her in front of somebody. But... And let her turn you down, of course. Oh, oh I see. Of course, yes, that'll save face. Uh, uh, well, uh, Pearl will know that she's supposed to turn me down. Oh, sure, we'll have an understanding with Pearl. Now, the one I think you ought to propose in front of is Elverna Bradshaw. You know, Mr. Clampett, this idea of yours is quite inspired. Oh, just a notion. You see, Elverna is the biggest gossip in here. No, really, it's brilliant. <laughs> it combines drama, pathos, suspense. It has a happy ending. Great third act curtain. It, it's it's real theater. Of course, you'll have to be convincing, so Elverna will... Convincing? Be. Why, I'll give a performance the people of these hills will remember as long as they live. <laughs> well, just so that uh, when Pearl Bodine turns down my impassioned proposal of marriage, there won't be a dry eye in the house. <laughs> Elverna, don't cry easy. Oh, well, now, surely you're not going to waste this dramatic scene before just one person. Well, I reckon Elverna's daughter... I've got it. I've got it at the movie house where Pearl plays the piano. You want to propose there? Well, it's perfect. Everybody in town will see it. Well, what kind of shame you to be turned down in front of all them people? Well, it's, it's just a performance. <laughs> I've learned one thing in the theater. An actor always gives a better performance in front of a full house. Well, doggy. That sure is nice, sir. <laughs> it's my it's my pleasure, Mr. Van. Uh, Mrs. Bodine, Fanny, come on in. Come here, everybody. How about everybody? I reckon we better let Mr. Brewster tell you what's going to happen. Oh. Well, tonight at the movie house, Mrs. Bodine, while the whole town looks on, I'm going to ask you to marry me. <laughs> When Mr. Brewster asks you to marry him, you're going to say no. Not unless I'm as drunk as you are. <laughs> Howdy, Pearl. Evening, Pearl. Hi, Granny. Chancho, I want to head down to the theater to get a fire going in the stove. Where's Jeff Bainey, Pearl? Why, she's in her room getting dressed. Go on in and see her. Granny, what happened to your mink coat? This is it. Tonight's kind of special, so I'm wearing the pretty side out. <laughs> you sure got your pretty side out tonight, Pearl? <laughs> oh, I tell you, Jed, I'm as nervous as if I was going to get a real honest-to-goodness proposal. And it would be real if your cousin Jed would do his duty and hold a shotgun on that fella, Brewster. Now, ladies, let's settle for what we got. This way, Pearl can come to California without nobody saying she left town in disgrace. Good evening. Good evening. <laughs> Ain't you dressed up? That boiled shirt makes your face look kind of dark. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm wearing a little theatrical makeup. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, uh, how would you like some pancake on your face? How'd you like some sweet potato pie on yours? <laughs> Fetch me some hot possum grease, Pearl, and I'll fling it on. <laughs> now, ladies, you misunderstood me. Pancake is a type of makeup we use in the theater. An actor like myself would feel positively undressed without it. I thought you was a oil man. Well, that's my business. But at heart, I shall always be an actor. <laughs> Say now, speaking of acting, you two got it figured out what you want to say? Oh, yeah, we rehearsed 12 times. Um, Mr. Brewster will be sitting on the front row, and when the picture's over, he'll jump up uh, and excuse he's... Excuse me. I've been thinking about that. I believe it would be more effective if I made an entrance. <laughs> entrance? Yes, I'll come down the aisle. Oh, oh, all right. <sighs> and then Mr. Brewster's going to say, Mrs. Bodine, don't go to California with your cousin, Jed. Stay here and be my wife. Uh, excuse me. Uh, I, I've been thinking about that, too. Uh, after a big entrance down the aisle, that's going to seem like a pretty flat opening speech. Well, you just say what you want to say. 
All I gotta say is, no, I won't marry you. If that's Homer Winch, I'm gonna hit him right in the head. <laughs> What, what are you doing here? Well, you and me being such close friends, I just thought I'd offer to play Piani for you at the theater tonight. Why? Surely you're not going to show up and have folks whispering behind your back all during the picture. <laughs> what in the world would they be whispering about? Girl, I'm your best friend. You don't have to pretend with me. <laughs> the whole town knows how you've been flinging yourself at that border of yours. For your information, Alberta Bradshaw, Mr. Booster proposed to me 12 times today, and 12 times I turned him down. <laughs> <laughs> Is that why he gave you this here mink coat? Because you turned him down. <laughs> this here mink coat was given to me by my niece, Ellen May Clampett. Oh, Pearl, I keep telling you, you don't have to pretend with me. I'm your best friend. <laughs> now, Verna Bradshaw is your best friend. You're up to your eyeballs and enemies. <laughs>
with all my heart. With all the soul, I love you as no man has ever loved woman before. He's better than Francis X. Bushman. Be mine. Sir, be mine. Come back here, Mr. Brewster. <laughs> no, Mr. Brewster, my answer is no. Then life has come to an end. But what is life without love? If I was him, I'd let it go at that. <laughs> without girl, Bodine, there is no love. Oh, my darling, oh, my precious. Say those words that will make me the happiest of men. I'm behind you. <laughs> my answer is still no. Make a point right your head, Mr. Brewster. Oh, how those words stab into my heart like cold steel. And only you, Pearl Bodine, can heal the mortal wound. Oh, moon of my desire. Baron Pearl. No. I promise you a life of happiness. No. A life of luxury. No. Oh, me darling, look into me tear-stained eyes. Look into the tortured face of your love slave. Free me with that one divine word. Say yes. Say yes. And together we will enter a paradise of love everlasting. Yes, 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 I'll marry you. <laughs> Did you say yes? Yes! If I hadn't said yes, I was ready myself. Glad to see you, especially Pearl. Her and Jeff Reed's coming to stay with us. Let me get my shoe on, you big overgrown moose. You can put it on in the car, Granny. We's in a hurry. We can't leave until somebody finds Ellie Mae. Where is she? She took to the woods early this morning with those two timber wolves that she's let sleep under her bait. Yeah, I'll find her. My doggie, it's a good thing we're leaving. One more night and she'd be baying at the moon. <laughs> now, you two rascals have got to stay away from Maggie and her family. You hear me? Is it a deal? All right. Now, don't you forget it. You seen them, Maggie. Give their word. What's more, Rita's gonna keep an eagle eye on them. If they goes to pestering you, she's gonna snatch them ball. Ain't you, Freedom? <laughs> I wish you could come to Beverly Hills and live with us, but I reckon it'd be too long a trip for you and your youngin'. But I'll come back and see you in the spring. Ellie Mae. Over here, Pa. You got them wolves with you? Well, they won't pester you none. And that no biting promise goes for my Pa, too. <laughs> Hello there, Maggie. Ellie, honey. Mr. Brewster's waiting, and we got to pick up Pearl and Jess Reen and drive clean to the airport. St. Pearl and Mr. Brewster are getting married? Well, no, not yet. Uh, maybe never. But Pearl's satisfied. 
Everybody in town seen him propose to her. Now she can leave town with her chin up and her head thrown back, proud and happy. I bet you cousin Jeff Rain ain't happy. She says she ain't going to California and leave her sweetie Jazz Bo to pew. She's powerful in love with that little feller. Yeah, I reckon Jess Reen will do pretty much what her ma tells her to. That Pearl's a mighty strong-willed woman. Jess Reen's pretty near time for them to pick us up. Now, no more sulking. You're coming to California. I don't want to hear no more argument about it. Okay, ma. I'm coming. <laughs> have you got there? It's a trunk, Ma. Well, I can see that, but what you got in it? Well, I got some clothes and some shoes and, and some food and some water. I forgot the water. <laughs> water, why did you... Mighty strong willed girl. Did she put you in, Slater? I think so. I told her I couldn't go to California with her. And that's the last thing I remember. Oh, don't let him get away. Jan Green, you put him down. This minute. What's the matter with you? Why, that poor boy could suffocate in that trunk without no air. <laughs> Jethreen, am I gonna have to take a switch to you? Jethreen, honey, like I told you, I can't just pick up and go. I got a big business going here. Well, couldn't you be a traveling salesman in California? <laughs> Darling, it's taken me years to build up this territory. And this is my big selling season. Why, well, I can knock down $100 in the next two or three months. And a fellow don't walk away from a gold mine like that. <laughs> in sense, Jethreen. But Uncle Jed's a millionaire. Cousin Ellie says they got plenty of room in that mansion. He could stay there with us. Get the rain. I got my pride. Why, well, I'd rather die than take charity from my sweetheart's kinfolk. Oh, what's your, you can write to one another. Of course. And I'll be here when you get back. Oh, there they are. Now, Jeffrey, you get ready to leave. Mr. Brewster, I thought it was my boy Jethro. Cousin Jed come to pick up the suitcase. Well, no, I, I asked him to let me come for them. I, well, you see, this, uh, this may be my last chance to see you alone for a moment. Alone? You? you me? Us? <laughs> Why would you? Well, first, I want to thank you for publicly breaking our engagement after I lost my head as I did last night. Oh, shucks. I, I didn't mean it when I said yes. It was just nerves and excitement at the moment. Well, you were very sweet about yeah, it. Yeah, well, well, but now that my head is clear and I'm thinking straight, well, I realize I couldn't get married right now. Well, some man would lose a wonderful wife. My goodness, I got, I got family obligations, you know. My cousin Jed's been after me three or four months to come to Beverly Hills and get that wild daughter of his proper dressed and acting like a lady. I'm going to miss you, Mrs. Bodine. Yes, well, he's in desperate need of me. <laughs> I don't know what come over me last evening, but now that I had a good night's sleep in the morning coffee, got my wits together, well, I could just laugh at myself for, for even considering marriage. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, I, I just want to say that I think you're a splendid woman, and I'm sure our paths will cross again. And, well, I'd consider it a, a great honor if you'd allow me to kiss you goodbye. Kiss me. <laughs> well, I hardly think there'd be anything wrong with that. <laughs> you know, Mr. Brewster, got a new Annie Pearl? <laughs> oh, anyway. Ellie Mae, look, uh, Jeff is in there saying goodbye to his sweetie, Jasbo DePew. So why don't you go in and say goodbye to him, too? Huh? All right. I ain't never met him. <laughs> Jethreen, you're just going to have to get it through your head. I cannot go to California, and that's that. Howdy. Oh, hi, Cousin Ellie. This here's my sweetie, Jasbo to Pew. Howdy, Jasbo. And a great big howdy to you. <laughs> this girl is the cousin you've been telling me about? Yeah, Jasbo. She's the one we'll be staying with in California. 
Well, poke me another air hole, baby, and let's go. <laughs> from Brewster and Tulsa. The Clampets are on their way home. Jethro? Oh, I mean the Clampets. <laughs> yes, and they're bringing a cousin and her daughter along. That'll be six of them. I think I'd better order an extra limousine. Chief, if I may suggest, the personal touch is very important to these people, and they are the bank's largest depositors. I would be happy to volunteer my car, and myself, I can take at least half the load. Jethro. <laughs> <laughs> and the luggage. See, Chief... I have bucket seats, and Jethro is quite a bucket full. <laughs> How's about three apiece, Chief? Fine. We'll be ready to leave the airport about noon. Entendu, mon capitaine. <laughs> Time to leave for the airport, Miss Hathaway. Right. I have no intention of disrupting office discipline with my seductive appearance. <laughs> what a remarkable change. Three hours in the beauty salon. Nelly, are you busy tonight? <laughs> because if you're not, I'd like you to work and make up those three hours. <laughs> They could have missed the plane. Oh, impossible. Brewster phoned me after he put him on board. Uh, oh, miss, uh, are there any more passengers aboard? Yes, there are uh, six. Well, they appear to be um, hillbillies. Was well, there anything wrong with them? Oh, no. You see, we served lunch before we arrived, and they refused to leave the plane until they helped do the dishes. Oh. <laughs> and we served 120 lunches. Well, here they come. Flight 201 for Chicago and New York is now loading at the East Concourse. Oh, thank you for sharing your food with us. Thank you for doing the dishes. You sure you don't want us to wash the windows? It won't take long if we all pitch in. <laughs> thank you. Drysdale, howdy. Welcome home, it's Clappy. This here is my cousin, Pearl Bodie. Oh, howdy, Mr. Drysdale. Oh, excuse my wet hair. Oh, it's quite all right. Well, how did you enjoy your plane ride? I don't believe it. Ah, uh, plane, don't believe it. It's a miracle. Oh, well, it ain't nothing. You ain't seen nothing for a wait till we ride on that escalator. Yes. Well, my car's out in front, Mr. Clavitt. Come on. <laughs> Mon amour. <laughs> that ain't my name. <laughs> Who are you? I am a wild and mysterious gypsy. <laughs> Take you away to my gypsy camp. You got some food there? Well, I can't stay long, but I am kind of hungry. <laughs> Help me wash all them dishes. Give me quite an appetite. Jack, them stairs is moving. We're having a California earthquake. Uh, Pearl, them stairs are supposed to move like that. What's that? I don't know, but uh, that's what they call an escalator. Well, the thing is, last time we was here, they was moving the other way. <laughs> yep. Come on. Well, we ain't going to get on them crazy stairs. Oh, come on, bro. Once you're on there, you like it. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Welcome home, Allie Mae. Howdy, Mr. Dodsdale. Welcome home, Granny. Thank you. Uh, well, where's your three? Last I saw of her, she was still eating. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, this place 
think she's haunted. Of course, just went through that door. There you go, Goose Pearl. That's what they call an uh, electric eye. They got them all over out here. Well, you go first. I ain't taking no chances on crowding a spook. <laughs> Out here, you can see what you're breathing. <laughs> yeah, it's got a lot of body to it. I tell you, Pearl, there's some days when you can cut it with a knife. But don't try it, because it gets a knife awful smudgy. <laughs> here, Mr. Bridell, card will rest some cup. Just speechless. 
That'll be the day. Well, look at this ice box here. Just take a look. You ever see anything like that before? Look at that. Well, I don't like to mention it yet, but somebody left the light a burning in there. <laughs> I reckon some people just don't care how they waste other people's money. The light comes on when you open the door. You don't say. He pert near didn't with you pounding your gums. <laughs> Jeffrey wants to know where's the suitcases, especially the big one with the sandwiches in it. <laughs> but Jethro said he'd bring in the suitcases. Jethro. What happened to my boy? Where's Jethro? Well, the last time I seen him, a dark-haired gypsy woman was taking him away. A gypsy's got him. My baby's been carried off by the gypsy. <laughs> Don't worry, Pearl. One meal and they'll carry him right back. <laughs> I'm having a little bit mixed up. Besides, Jethro is big enough to take care of himself. Yeah, my mom's in here. Oh, Come on in. My baby, where you been? With the gypsy woman. We stopped to get something to eat. I told you one meal and they'd bring them back. <laughs> you gypsy kidnapper. I'm going to snatch you both. Out of the way. What you doing being a gypsy? Just a little harmless fun, Mr. Clampett. When Jethro failed to recognize me, I couldn't resist continuing the masquerade. Uh, Ma, this here's Miss Hathaway, Mr. Drysdale's secretary. I'm happy to know you, Mrs. Lotini. I have brought your son back safe and sound. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Is your hair back? <laughs> How about staying for supper, Miss Hathaway? Oh, I wouldn't want to be in any trouble. Well, I figured with company at the table, there wouldn't be so much trouble. <laughs> Where did you taste great a sweet potato pie? Ain't nobody can make sweet potato pie like my ma. Now, they is both very fine, extra good cooks, but uh, Pearl not knowing her way around the kitchen, I reckon. Oh, that... well, don't you worry not about that, Dad. I'll have this kitchen put in order in no time. It ain't out of order. <laughs> Ellie, you get rid of the ants. I'll start the cooking. What I am? Start with your Aunt Pearl. <laughs> well, I like that. I'll bet you you won't like what I'm going to say next. <laughs> Now, Pearl, you know there ain't nothing more soothing and appetizing than a mess of piano playing and sweet singing for supper. But I figure a body can't be doing that and cooking at the same time. No, I don't think they hardly could, Jeff. Right. Now, if somebody will get Mr. Drysdale, we'll all sit around while supper's cooking and listen to the kind of music that has made the name of Bodine famous from Oxford to Eureka Spring. <laughs> Supper time. Want me to start setting the table? Yeah, and let's use that big company table in the fancy eating room. Okay, Paul. Uh, you help me get the chairs around? Why, sure. Leave the door open so as we can hear the music. Okay, Paul. I'm kind of glad we got the company so we can show off this fine eating table. Yeah, we ain't used it since Thanksgiving. Has Granny figured out a way to get this tablecloth unstuck yet? No, she ain't, Paul. She even tried to steam it off. She couldn't get loose. She said if she didn't know better, she'd think somebody stuck it down on purpose. Well, I'm glad I got all my pot passers notched. I'm gonna come in real handy. See? If you find out there that you want, you can uh, reach for it and get it or pass it without bothering the fellow sitting next to you. Yeah, the good thing about this table is things can't go a sliding off. Oh, I gotta tell Granny. Since we're gonna use this table, she can leave the vittles right in the pots. Mm, doggies, you pearl getting fancy. <laughs> Thank you. 
I ain't never heard you play the piano any prettier than you're a plain and red. <laughs> you ain't playing the piano. You bet you I ain't. <laughs> Money to take everybody out to a nice eating place. Mr. Clavett, with your money, you can buy the finest restaurant in Beverly Hills. Before the battle's over, that's just what I might have to do. Come on, everybody. <laughs> 